Hey everybody, ABC 10 meteorologist uh, Brendan Minchef here uh, with a weather update because we've got our first red flag warning of the year in the valley. So let's get started and we will start by looking at the red flag warning with a disclaimer here with a qualifier. Let's put it there. Uh, Saturday at 11 p.m. is when this red flag warning begins and ends Sunday at 8 p.m. So essentially uh, Saturday night through most of the daytime on Sunday. But what I do want to say is even though Sacramento County is lit up uh, in the pink color here as part of the warning, this does not actually include Sacramento or really much of Sacramento County at all. It just kind of clips a little bit of Sac County, but uh, the downtown area, most of the metro not included in this. The reason it looks the way it does is because of the way the weather service uh, issues alerts. Now, they have to do it by defined areas, by county boundaries, or uh, in this case, the Sacramento Valley, uh, which is why it just kind of lights up everything. But in actuality, really what we're concerned about is this area here, especially right along and just to the west of Interstate 5. That's where that highest fire danger is going to be, along with other parts of the Sacramento Valley. So that's why it looks the way it does. I know Sacramento is included uh, in this pink coloring, but it is not actually part of of the red flag warning. Now, let's just talk very briefly about what a red flag warning is. Important to know the difference. We're not unfamiliar with these necessarily, but it's the first one of the year, so it's just a good refresher. A fire weather watch, which is where we were yesterday on Thursday. So before we had the red flag warning, we had the fire weather watch. That's issued uh, up to days in advance, and it just means that the weather pattern may be conducive for critical fire conditions. We may get strong winds, we may get low relative humidity or high temperatures or whatever the combination may be. There's a few different things that can uh, trigger critical fire weather conditions. But the fire weather watch just means we may get it. A red flag warning means the confidence has increased and in that we will meet critical fire weather conditions. And in this case, that's what we've got. We are going to be meeting that critical fire weather mark. So uh, what I want to show you here is really fuels. This is the energy release component for the Sacramento Valley. That's a lot of words. Essentially what the energy release component is, is just telling you how dry or wet the fuels are. And in this case, we're looking at the Sacramento Valley, which means we're looking mainly at grasses and other kind of smaller shrubs. We're not really looking at trees or uh, uh, like uh, in, in the case of trees, right? It's kind of a large, uh, kind of several inches in diameter across, right? Could be a foot or more uh, tree trunk. In this case, we're in the valley looking really at the grasses and the small low-lying shrubs. And so what we're looking at is it's very seasonal right now, a little bit above average. The current ERC is at 52%. And that average line right here, maybe just a little bit below that, closer to maybe 48, 49%. But it is trending upwards. And as we go deeper into the summer, this line is going to continue to trend up. And in fact, the forecast is already kind of showing that we could be closer to 60% or above uh, in terms of the ERC in the Sacramento Valley within the next week or two. So uh, we're just going to continue this drying trend as we go deeper into the summer. And right now, the Sacramento Valley is a lot drier than the Sierra is. And that's in large part due to the temperatures, right? We've had uh, several triple digit days already. We've been in the 90s for basically every other day that we've not been in the triple digits. And Friday's no exception. We're going to continue to be in those low 90s even through the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, and the start of next week. So let's break it down a little bit, time it out some more. Saturday, uh, we're going to start to see that northerly wind develop. It's just going to be mainly breezy. We're not really looking at really strong winds for Saturday, at least in the valley, but that wind shift is going to occur where we have winds out of the north as opposed to the south or that delta breeze, especially in the Sacramento Valley. That's when I say valley, mainly what I'm talking about uh, with this event. Now, we're also going to see some wind gusts out of the southwest in the Sierra, 20, 25 miles per hour, maybe stronger at times for Saturday. There's no warnings up there, no watches up there for fire weather uh, as things stand. But those winds are going to pick up as we go through the overnight hours Saturday into Sunday. Now, that's when that red flag warning kicks in. Remember, at 11 p.m. Saturday and basically all day Sunday. So Sunday's really uh, the day of concern for the Sacramento Valley. We're going to see wind gusts out of the north at about 35 plus miles per hour, especially on the west side of the Sacramento Valley. So uh, Interstate 5 to the west, right? That's especially uh, the area of concern there, even though the whole Sacramento Valley, not including the city of Sacramento in the metro area, the whole Sac Valley is in that red flag warning, but it's especially on the western side of the valley. That red flag warning expires uh, into the evening on Sunday, but Monday and Tuesday, we're still going to see some north winds and we're still going to have low relative humidity. It's just not as high as what we're seeing on Sunday and not meeting 
that kind of critical fire weather threshold as things stand. So just because that warning will expire in the evening on Sunday doesn't mean by the time we get to Monday and Tuesday, we're in the clear. No, we're still going to have relative humidity values as low as about 5% in the valley, and we're still going to have some breezy north winds at times. So let's kind of time it out on future cast here. And I've drawn this kind of orange oval here, if you will. This is our area of highest concern. It is the Sacramento Valley. It does, again, not include the city of Sacramento. No, it does not include Elk Grove, Roseville, anything like that. Most of the metro area not included. Uh, but it really centers on I-5. And then, again, I'll say it again, the western side of I-5, as you work your way to the coastal range uh, in the foothills over there, that is really the highest area of concern because we're going to have poor overnight recovery in terms of relative humidity values as well. We're not going to see uh, that kind of cool delta air that's also a moist delta air working into that part of the valley. So we'll get to RH in a second. I don't want to go off topic too much, but I do want to show uh, the wind gusts. It's all connected here. So Friday night, we're going to get that delta breeze developing. That will help to cool us off. It'll pump some moist air into the valley as well. But then things start to change on Saturday. Like we talked about, it's not a strong wind, but you notice the directions here all out of the north across the valley for Saturday afternoon. We'll also see some stronger winds in the Sierra Saturday afternoon, but then that red flag warning kicks in late Saturday into Sunday. And now you can see why I've put that oval there on the map, because that's the area of concern that we're looking at where the north winds start to pick up early in the morning on Sunday and continue for most of the day. Now, we'll still see a bit of a delta breeze through the San Joaquin Valley, parts of the delta, uh, the Sacramento Metro probably gets part of this Delta Breeze Sunday as well. But notice how that wind is not really making it up into the Northern Valley there. And it's also not really wrapping around towards the coastal range. The winds continue out of the north there. So even though that red flag warning expires, we're still not going to see great overnight recovery going into Monday. And we're still going to have some north winds. So again, even though that warning is expired, even though there's no watch for Monday, Tuesday anymore, we're still going to be watching, especially the Sacramento Valley here, because of those north winds and the lower relative humidity values all the way into Tuesday morning when the northerly winds look to pick up a little bit yet again. Let's tie this back into relative humidity now uh, and show you that the values will be low. So we're looking at around 10% relative humidity for Saturday with some light north winds, but we'll see some recovery Saturday across parts of the valley. Sacramento 53%, Stockton, Modesto 40%, but you look at Marysville 38%. 26% in Oroville, even drier the farther north you go, and it doesn't reach parts of the coastal range foothills there on uh, the western side, sorry, the eastern side of the foothills. So that's part of the reason why we've got that red flag warning there. This is Sunday afternoon, 10%, 12%, 9%. Again, we'll get a little delta breeze through the delta, maybe the San Joaquin Valley, but there's not going to be a lot of overnight recovery uh, as you work through the Sacramento Valley. Look at this, Monday morning, 60% relative humidity values through the delta, and the San Joaquin, but in the Sacramento Valley, it's below 50% relative humidity. So again, even though that warning expires going into Monday and Tuesday, we still have that north breeze. We're still gonna have relative humidity values in the teens for most of the daytime. Overnight recovery is not all that impressive. And Tuesday afternoon with the northerly breeze also looks dry with those single digit relative humidity values in the valley. So uh, still gonna be watching for fire danger. Even as we go Monday through Tuesday, it's just that time of the year. So a helpful reminder yet again about the go bag five P's in particular order, right? This is in order of one to five, important to not as important. So number one, people and pets, really number one to one bag for each person in your house, pets, at least one bag for all your pets. If you have maybe two, three, four, you may need maybe two bags for all your pets, but you're going to pack clothes, kind of the essentials, the everyday items that you'll need, toothbrushes, toothpaste, that kind of thing in everybody's go bags. Uh, papers, you're also going to need your important papers, uh, insurance documents, uh, any sort of title or deed, uh, birth certificates, social security number cards, uh, whatever it may be, you're going to want those as well. Maybe death certificates, marriage certificates, anything along those lines. Number four, prescriptions. You'll want those prescriptions, whether that's a piece of paper or your actual uh, like bottle of prescription medication or medical devices. You're going to need to bring those with you as well. You may not have immediate access to get new ones if you have to evacuate. And lastly, photos. Now, it's not just photos, but it's it sticks with the 5P theme, right? This would be little trinkets, knickknacks, uh, things that are of sentimental value, maybe not uh, doesn't hold maybe financial or economic importance, but it's important to you. Uh, and you can bring those as long as they're small, they fit in your bag, and they're not going to slow you down getting out the door if you need them. So good time to pack those 
uh, things. Again, in order of importance, the five P's that you need to remember. And I also want to point out, too, that we think a lot about somewhere like Paradise or South Lake Tahoe when it was at risk uh, from fire not too long ago, or maybe Superior, Colorado, uh, with the wildfire that went through a few years ago. Those were big fires. Uh, they went through urban areas. Uh, I mean, there's a number of examples from Southern California, but not every fire is gonna be huge, especially when it comes to the grass fires in the valley. Certainly they can be several hundred acres or several thousand acres, but it could even just be a few acres, maybe a dozen, and it goes through part of a neighborhood, or you live near uh, an open space, a little regional park, and maybe it hops the street, and now it burns down a couple houses right on the edge of that park. It's not just the big fires you need to worry about. If you live close to these dry, grassy areas, especially if the grass is tall, hasn't been mowed, maybe hasn't been kept up, uh, you should still be ready when we have days like this, when we have that north wind, uh, when we have the low relative humidity, because again, even though the fire, if it starts, may be small, no more than a dozen acres or so, if it jumps that road, jumps that fence, it gets into the neighborhood, uh, it could easily take out a few houses before the firefighters can get it under control. So uh, again, it's not just the people that live in the rural areas. If you live next to a park, you still got to be prepared. That's why we do these things. That's why we talk about uh, the fire weather conditions, because it's important to all of us and it impacts all of us as well. So over the next 10 days, there are a few holidays coming up, but really Sunday is the day in the immediate future that we're gonna be watching for the really highest fire danger. That's that red flag warning day, winds out of the north, especially in the Sacramento Valley, upwards of 35 miles per hour. We're still gonna have some northerly winds going Monday into Tuesday. Northerly winds start to die down late Tuesday into Wednesday, and we'll kind of return to a normal pattern, if you will, with the Delta Breeze in the afternoons. And then Juneteenth on Wednesday and the first day of summer on Thursday, we're going back into those mid and upper 90s. And for next weekend, we're looking at those triple digits as well. So again, immediate risk, fire danger, looking out into the future. We have another heat wave with some triple digits on the way. Be sure to stay tuned to ABC 10, ABC 10 Plus and ABC 10.com for the very latest news, weather and fire info. Thanks for watching.